Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So today's video is going to be covering um, ACT math content. So my other video on the math section covers the topics within the math section. So like the different types of algebra and then like probability. So if you're looking for kind of what you should be look, what you need to learn, that's the video to go look at. But if you're kind of looking for more of like a teaching of the math, this is the video for you. Trick questions are typically more of the advanced questions. You're gonna see them towards like the end of the test. So maybe between questions 45 and 60. So, so the first thing to know about trig is so to toa. So what these are are the different um, trig ratios. So sine is Sine of theta is opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine of theta is adjacent over hypotenuse. And then tangent of theta is opposite over adjacent. So let's say these um, ratios only work for right triangles. So that means that we have to have um, a right angle in the triangle. So this is our right triangle. There's our right angle. So let's say this is theta. This is the angle that we're looking, a reference angle kind of. So the angle or the side that is opposite of the angle is the opposite. The side that's opposite to the 90 degrees is the hypotenuse. And then the side that's um, neither of these is going to be the adjacent. And so opposite can change, opposite and adjacent can kind of change depending on what angle you're looking at. So taking the same um, triangle with the same sides and the same angle measure, if we're looking at theta as this angle right here, the side that used to be our adjacent becomes opposite and the other side becomes um, adjacent. So hypotenuse is the one thing that stays constant and that's because hypotenuse is the longest side of triangle. And then the longest side of the triangle will always be opposite to the angle with the largest degree measure. And the largest degree one angle can have in the triangle is 90 degrees. So this will always be hypotenuse. Those are the ratios. So what this means is if I was asked for, let's ignore the second triangle that I drew over here. Um, so if I was asked for a sine of theta, and let's say the side is equal to three, and the side is equal to four, and then the side is equal to five. So when I'm asked for a sine of theta, I'm gonna write three over five. That's the ratio. So cosine of theta is four over five. Tangent of theta is um, three over four. So we also have, um, inverse order, yeah, inverse. Um, we also have, so all of them, all of the ratios have inverse ratios. So the inverse of sine is cosecant. The inverse of cosine is secant. And the inverse of tangent is cotangent. So the ratios for these are basically, again, just like the reciprocal of um, sine, the reciprocal of the original. So the um, reciprocal of sine is hypotenuse over opposite. So I know that cosecant is gonna be that. Reciprocal of cosine is gonna be hypotenuse over adjacent. And then the reciprocal of cotangent is opposite over, I mean, adjacent over opposite. Okay. Typically with these, you'll see very straightforward problems for the most part with the ratios. You'll just see what is sine of this angle? What is the cosine of this angle? So that's the basic trig ratios. Other things you have to know for trig is um, Pythagorean theorem. So let's do this. So in this, I know that a squared plus a squared is equal to h squared. Typically, it's written as a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared, where um, c is the hypotenuse, and then b is just like a and b are interchangeable. They're just different sides. Um, but for our sake, just to keep 
us in reference point, we're going to be using it like this. So that's Pythag. And so from Pythag, we're able to derive a, um, a trig identity. So, tr so from trig identities, we have this specific trig identity, which is sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to one. And then this comes from, if we kind of write out the ratios as such, so h squared or h squared is one. And then if we remove all of the h squares, so if we multiply this whole thing by um, h squared, we are left with opposite squared plus adjacent squared is equal to hypotenuse squared, which is this Pythagorean um, identity that we have over here. So sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to one. That's something that's very important to know. Um, and then there are other trig identities out there. So other trig identities. Other identities you should know is that tangent is equal to sine over cosine. That's because tangent is opposite over adjacent. So with sine, sine we have opposite over hypotenuse. And then divided by cosine, which is adjacent over hypotenuse. So that gives us opposite over hypotenuse. So that's an identity to know right there. So this property right here is called law of sines. And that's basically that the sine of an angle and divided by the um, side opposite of that angle, that ratio is going to be the same as like the sine of another angle divided by that. So I'm going to write this out like this and then show you what that means. Let's say this is A, this is B, and then this is C. These are our angles. And then the sides that are opposite is going to be as such. So A, B, and C. OK, so that's a lot of the law of signs. So if you're struggling with, if you don't know where to start, this is typically a good place to start. Another good. Um, property to know is the law of cosines. And that's a squared is equal to c squared plus b squared minus 2bc times cosine a. So you'll know when to use this one for sure, because I'm going to write out the same um, angles over here. And so you'll typically really know when to use this based on um, what you're given and what you're solving for. So if you're, if you know all of the sides and um, if you know all the sides and you're solving for an angle, you can use this. And then if you don't, if you know two sides and you know one angle, you can solve for a side length. And the important thing here is that A could also be B. Essentially what A means is that the angle that you know is opposite to a side. So I could say B right here. If I change this A right here to B, then I would change this B to an A and then this A to a B. So you can use it for any side. The important part is this right here, which is that the angle that you're, you have is the one that's opposite to the side that you're solving for. Okay, and another thing to know with um, trig is that if you know two sides and you need to know an angle, you can use your trig ratios to find that angle. So if I have a right triangle and I know A and I know H, and so this is my angle and I want to know what this is, what I could do is I know that sine of question mark, not sine, sorry. I know that cosine of that question mark angle is equal to A over H. So what that means is cosine inverse of that ratio gives me my question mark. So this function right here, you'll find all of them for each of the ratios. Um, they'll be on your calculator. 
So if you find these on your calculator. So if you're ever trying to solve for an angle, that's the way to go is use this method right here. The other thing to know with um, trig problems is how the graphs look. So our graphs, I'm gonna draw the sine graph out and then the cosine and then the tangent. So with these, you should typically be able to know what they look like. So if, you, if you're given a graph, you need to be able to identify which of the three it is, and then also know what the um, amplitude and periods are. So I'll talk about those two things later, but first I'm gonna go ahead and draw these out. Okay, so these are what the graphs look like. So the key thing with the sine graph is that it hits the origin, so it crosses through zero, zero. And then with the cosine graph, it's, um, it's y intercept is um, zero, one. And then with tangent, the way that you're gonna recognize it is it's very asymptotes. So it has an asymptote at each, each pi over two. So at each pi over two. So at pi over two, you have an you have an asymptote right here, and then you have an asymptote at and you have an asymptote at pi. It's an asymptote right there, and this is three pi over two. You have another asymptote here, and that continues even for the negative side. So negative pi over two has another asymptote. So given that if our equation is in this form, where all of the capitalized letters are constants, this is what's gonna happen. So A is equal to our amplitude. B, we're gonna take B. And so our period is equal to 2 pi over b. And so also with b, we have something called frequency, which is basically the reciprocal of period. So that's going to be b over 2 pi. OK. And so c is our phase shift. So that's our movement left or right. So if C is positive, we are going to move left or negative direction. And so if C is negative, we're going to move right or positive direction. So if we have x minus 3, we're going to move three units right. If we have x plus three, we're going to move three units left. And so d is our vertical movement. So if d is positive, we move up. And if d is negative, we move down. And then so some other things to remember is um, this right here, which is an acronym. It's all students take calculus. So that's quadrant one, quadrant two, quadrant three, and then quadrant four. So all students take calculus. This lets us know in what quadrant are the ratios positive. So in quadrant one, all are positive. In quadrant two, only sine is positive. In quadrant three, um, tangent is positive. And then in quadrant four, cosine is positive. So that's a neat acronym to remember. It really does come in handy. So something that I recommend is drawing out your angles. So this is our 90 degree mark. This is our zero degree mark. This is our 180 degree mark. And then this is our 270 mark. And our zero degree is also our 360 degree mark. 
So we're just going to practice drawing out different angles first. So let's say your angle was um, 87 degrees. Your angle would be somewhat like this. So that would be your angle right there. And what you would do is kind of just draw it out and go from there, okay? So typically what's going to happen is we're going to get one of these triangles. You're going to get you're going to get a 30, 60 in triangle, or you're going to get a 45, 45 triangle. So the side that is opposite to 30 degrees is going to be one half. And the side that is opposite of 60 degrees is going to be this. So for the 45, 45 triangle, we're going to have square root of 2 over 2 and square root of 2 over 2. So this is an isosceles triangle where um, these angles are the same and this side length is the same. Okay, let's say, let's do some practice problems. Let's say our angle was one, 135 degrees. So our angle is going to be... Um, greater than 90. And so what is this minus 90? It's 45 degrees. So that means we still have 45 more degrees to go. So this is our angle right here. This whole thing is theta. Okay, I'm gonna erase, I'm gonna erase this. So what this means here is that this, this side over here in green, this is 45 degrees, right? Because if this is the 180 mark right here, and we've done one, 135 of the 180, that means we have 180 minus 135, which is 45 degrees. So because we have 45 degrees right here, what that means is that we can draw an imaginary 45-45 triangle. So let's, given that this is 45, we're gonna draw our triangle right here. We can draw our triangle right here. And so our question is gonna be, what is sine of 135 degrees? And so obviously sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So what we're looking for, so what we're looking for, if this is our, this is our angle right here, this in teal, that's our, that's our 135 degrees. So we're looking for the sides that are opposite. So this is our opposite side. And then this is our hypotenuse. So I'm going to pull this out of the coordinate plane. So what we have here is a 45-45 is a triangle. So I know that this is square root of 2 over 2, and then this is 1. So. I also know that this is my opposite and this is my hypotenuse because this is my 45 degrees. So taking these, I know that my sine of 45 degrees or technically 135 is going to be square root of 2 over 2 divided by 1 or over 1. So, right? So now I'm going to double check. Okay, so what is the exact value of sine of 135? So they've given us the decimal answer, but right here they've told us that it's one over square root of two. So one, one over square root of two. And so one over square root of two is rationalized is square root of two over two. So our answer is correct. And so now let's do the same problem, except we're gonna do cosine. Cosine 135. So once again, our angle is going to look something like this. And so over here, we're going to have 45 degrees left. And so this is also going to be 45. And this is going to be my hypotenuse opposite and adjacent. And so for cosine, I need adjacent over hypotenuse, right? So if this is my adjacent, I know that my adjacent should be square root of 2 over two, just like my opposite. And then I know that my hypotenuse is one. However, the key thing here, this is a very tricky problem because of this, 
my adjacent is in the negative. So what I mean is from here to here, right? My x values are all negative, which means that this is not an ordinary square root of two over two. It's a negative square root of two over two. So because of that, I know that my final answer is going to be negative square root of 2 over 2 over 1. So basically, my final answer is negative square root of 2. And so let's go back up to that all students take calculus thing. So this is a quadrant I'm in right now. So this lines up perfectly. My sine answer was positive, but my cosine answer is negative. So that matches up, so that's good. So when you're drawing out your um, triangles for these type of equations, your triangles should always look like a butterfly. What this means is your triangles should always look like this. So when you have an angle like, like such, your, your triangle is never gonna be this right here, okay? Your triangle will never do that. The correct triangle will look something like this in green, okay? Likewise, let's say our angle is over here. Let's say our triangle is over here. A triangle is never gonna look like this. My correct triangle is going to be like this, okay? So always look like a butterfly. So if your triangle doesn't match one of these right here, then you know that you've drawn it wrong and you're gonna get you're gonna mix up your sides and angles. So that's why this part is very important. Let's do a couple more here. I'm gonna do one in the third quadrant and one in the fourth quadrant. Okay, for this practice problem, let's say we're gonna do tangent now. We have tangent of 240. So that tells me I'm gonna be going past 180 and how much past am I gonna go? I'm going to be going for 60 more degrees. So I have my angle right here. So I have 60 right here. So now think back to the butterfly. Is my triangle supposed to be like this or like this? Which one is the butterfly? This one right here is my butterfly, okay? So kind of just practice drawing out different triangles and seeing which one might makes that butterfly shape and then that's gonna help you there. So because that's my butterfly, I know that my angle is gonna be 60 degrees, my reference angle, and I'm doing tangent. So obviously opposite over here, hypotenuse over here, adjacent. And so I have a 60 degree angle right here. So let's go back to my reference triangle. The side opposite of 60 is pi over three. And the side opposite of 30 is one, one over two. So my side opposite of 60 is pi over three. And the side opposite of um, 30 is one over two. So tangent of 60. So tangent of technically um, 240 is equal to tangent of 60. However, here's the thing to note here. My adjacent is negative, right? Because I'm in my negative x. And also my opposite is negative because I'm in the negative y direction. This is negative y, this is negative x. So because of that, my final thing is gonna be op opposite over adjacent. So both of my negatives are gonna cancel out and I'm gonna be left with this right here. And does that match with my all students take calculus thing? All students take calculus. So I'm in this quadrant right here. My answer is positive and I have a T in that quadrant, so my answer is correct. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense right there. 
that I typically get stuck on how to do those and I think that's something very important and very helpful to know. I hope this video was helpful. Um, I hope this covered the complex part of trigonometry math. Um, if there's any more questions that you might have, please leave them in the comments below and I'll try my best to make a video about it or at least answer it in the chat. Um, I hope again that this was helpful and good luck on your ACT prep.